Hello, welcome to another edition of Advocate with Albert Abkarian. Uh, we, as we discuss politics, we discuss community issues, uh, bringing sports uh, personalities in here. Uh, today we have with us uh, Kathy and Coco. They're going to be introducing themselves uh, very um, extensively. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, we are going to be talking about drug prevention, uh, uh, marijuana, uh, C uh, CBD with uh, high THCs, and a number of other issues uh, that are important to our community. Well, welcome to both of you. Kathy, let's start with you. Mm -hmm. Give me your full name and tell me what, uh, what it, uh, you know, a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, I'm Kathy Morphopoulos. And my background is actually real estate. I'm a real estate broker. I specialize in real estate lending. But a couple years ago, I got interested in um, uh, drug prevention, drug education. I became certified. And um, so I've been doing a lot of community work in trying to educate, especially our young. Okay, yeah. and we'll get back to. I mean, yes. we have a we have a, a lot of time to talk about that sure. because I want to see how you got involved and how you know what you do and, and yes. where you go and all of that. And Coco, mm -hmm. uh, if you can just go ahead and give me your full name, information, a little bit of background as to what you do. Sure, Coco Tabibzadeh. I've lived in Glendale for about 25 years now, and I started volunteering with Foundation for a Drug Free World about eight years ago. And I did that because I, re I, I was reading articles and I found out about kids, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds, dying um, from the first time use of drugs. Mm -hmm. And I had my 15-year-old at the time, and I realized it could have been him. And I just became very passionate about how kids are losing their lives because they simply just have no idea what's happening and what's in these drugs. Um. Well, so. that was that, that, that was a yeah. that was a good introduction, um, <laughs> Kathy. Let's talk about uh, how you got involved mm -hmm. and where you where you've been and where you are now. So let's yes. talk about that. Well, I I've, I've done a lot of volunteer work. I was involved in scouting. Both of my sons are Eagle Scouts, and um, had very little trouble with drugs or alcohol in my life. Thank God. Um, but I found that. Um, just in the last few years, just the normalization of drugs, the sort of like in our society, the way they're handling drugs has been um, very detrimental to our young. So I became passionate, and funny enough, I uh, hooked up with Coco, and we're doing a lot of community events. That's great. Yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. It's, it's mm -hmm. an important thing for us to do. Yeah. Um, let's talk, let me be the devil's advocate. Sure. Uh, marijuana is legal in yes. the state. If you know, uh, why shouldn't young people do it? What's the problem? It's like smoking. You know, you don't want your uh, 14, mm -hmm. 15 year old to smoke, uh, but it's not a big deal. Some people, some parents say. What right. do you say to that? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, if I could speak just a few minutes about that, Please. right? So the whole concept of uh, several years ago, we passed something called Proposition 64, and it wasn't to bring marijuana to the scene because we would had uh, legalized marijuana since 1996. And at that time, it was a relatively benign substance because it had what's called THC, which is the element that creates the high, um, at like in the range of three to four. So it was brought out for the seriously ill. We were in the middle of the AIDS crisis, you know, so it was. The three to four percent. Three to four percent right. of the product that a, pr that a person was uh, smoking was three to four percent. So, um, so since that time, uh, it has been ramping up. So I'll just give you a little bit of uh, things that have changed since, since we voted to basically commercialize. It it's really was legal before, it's just that they opened the floodgates to commercialization. So the difference is that we were told well, it was that we were going to get rid of the black market that was what Proposition 64's promise was. We were going to bring in a lot of tax revenue so that we could distribute it to drug education. We could do other things with it, and that we were going to regulate it so that it was you know, uh, just more under control. So, so very important things have happened in the last year that have kind of brought this into focus. Number one, the Surgeon General has done a full study and made uh, uh, an announcement which uh, had to do with marijuana. So the Surgeon General is this quite dynamic leader, and he said that there's a false perception that marijuana is not as harmful as other drugs. 
and no amount of marijuana use during pregnancy or adolescence, which basically means through the teens, is safe. So what he's saying is that the same type of warning that exists on our cigarettes should be applied to marijuana. So just a quick, uh, just a yeah. quick note. The Surgeon General is the, is the United States doctor. He's so the to speak. top United States doctor of the United States. Right. It, he's the one that puts out safety warnings. That health, is his health job. Issues. Exactly. That's what his right. Job is. Okay. So the the main issue is that what's happening is that the public is a little behind because what's happened is we we sort of were stuck in the past. We thought the marijuana was the old marijuana, but marijuana has been changed. So the new marijuana has very high levels of this thing called THC. So this was, uh, this article was, you know, with NPR News. Right. NPR News um, interviewed the Surgeon General and basically said, while our perception of the harm is decreasing, right, that we're saying it's not harmful, the actual truth is that the harm has increased. So it's our awareness thinks that the drug is s fairly safe. That's why we legalized it. But in reality, the harm has increased. Let me, let me, yeah. uh, I'll follow up with yeah. that. One of the issues that I've read in a number of articles mm -hmm. is that this is not the marijuana of the 70s, mm -hmm. so right. to speak. Right, you right. know, the, the intensity, the, the THC levels mm -hmm. went from 0.01 sometimes right. to all the way up to 12%. Uh, uh, and even higher now right. in marijuana. So some people mm -hmm. that say, well, we did my marijuana when we were in the 70s yeah. is completely different mm -hmm. than, first of all, the regular marijuana with high mm -hmm. THC and then the synthetic marijuana, which is just outrageous and could kill, mm -hmm. kill you, actually. Right. So how do you, you know, what do you say to that? Well, I, we just basically were in the same situation as we were with cigarettes. Cigarettes you know, you don't die on the spot. Cigarettes take a while to, um, to show their effects. So every year, 480,000 people die from cigarette use. But what that means is the guys that own these guys, the company that owns this, 480,000 of their clients, because this is the dominant brand, are dying each year. Their customers are dying. So they started to invest in two things, vaping, which delivers high nicotine to children, and it also delivers THC in high volume to kids. So the relevance is that they have invested in vaping and directly in marijuana. They need to replace their business. And so they're doing that through marijuana and they're doing that through uh, vaping. So we're, we're at the same point that we are with cigarettes, which is like people saying, well, I smoke and I'm fine. And even if the Surgeon General is saying, He's saying the higher the THC risk, the higher the THC, the higher the risk. So it's about that. It's addictive. So one in five people that start marijuana in their teens are going to be addicts. That's what the Surgeon General says. So it doesn't really matter if the cannabis companies say you can't prove it. The Surgeon General is saying we have proved it and it's one in five. So if you have 100 kids, we're going to have 20 addicts. So then they say, okay, well, what difference does that make? So we have people that are addicts. So he's saying, well, what are this, what's this high THC doing to the developing brain? So he's saying it causes depression, psychosis, schizophrenia, psychotic breaks, anxiety, low IQ. These are things that we don't really think are helpful to our, the next generation. Right. Of course. Yeah. Um, well, just talking to you, now you've been involved in this arena for a couple of years now? Eight years I've been doing Eight this, years. yes. Um, what have you seen that has really gotten to your heart, saying why? Why is this happening? Can you just answer that? Because I think it's very important for us, for someone who's been involved for eight years, you have mm -hmm. seen things. Yes. Uh, and what have you seen where you would say, you know what, enough is enough? Right. Well, I have, uh, in the last eight years, I've probably talked to like thousands of kids. I've talked to hundreds of parents. I give seminars to parents and kids. And the unfortunate thing is how the people who are after money are taking advantage of either like by lying to people or taking advantage of the fact that kids or parents, they just don't know. 
and in this age of social media, in this age of we want to pop a pill for anything, any problems we have, people don't want to go find out something for themselves. And um, I've been to classes where the kids have walked in high, and I've been in classes, nine, these are like 14 year olds. And um, there have been kids who, when I, I love this program, which is called The Truth About Drugs I'm from Foundation for a Drug Free World. And the reason I love this program is because the basis of it is that we just give you the truth. I'm not going to tell you drugs are bad. I'm not going to tell you, right. I'm not going to argue with you it's illegal or illegal. I'm right. just going to tell you this is what it is. Right. You make up your mind. Okay. And there are kids who watch this and they said, they watched the DVD and they said, had I known this, I would have never done what I yep. did. Yep. So they just have no idea what, what, and I was in a, I was in a high school last week. So, oh, Let me, let's, let's do this. Let's come back. Uh, we, we have to take a quick break okay. and mm -hmm. give our uh, advertisers some time. Uh, let us, let us uh, take a quick break, come back, and then let's, let's go ahead and continue this discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Uh, again, we're here with Kathy and Coco talking about, um, you know, how marijuana in CBD with, la with, with large amount of THC affects uh, young people's, mm -hmm. even old people's mm -hmm. uh, lives mm -hmm. uh, forever sometimes. Right. Um, you, were, you, were, you were saying something about uh, a DVD where the kids actually would watch it and said, if we would have just known right. the side effects, we would have never done it. Right. And I've, I was watching some uh, articles in the past two months about vaping mm -hmm. and how people are dying from uh, wet lung mm -hmm. disease yeah, and down. how that has become just an incredible, incredible thing yeah. that eye-opening experience for a lot of families because mm -hmm. they thought that because they're using the, I call it the flash drive right. <laughs> and smoking a flash right. drive, then there's no harm to it. Right. Uh, and the harm is actually probably 10 times more than cigarettes are. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, go ahead and continue telling me, and then we'll go to Kathy and ask her about uh, vaping as well. Sure. Yeah, what I wanted to say is that because people don't know, then they take advantage of it. Like, I was in a high school last week, and I asked the kids, I said, uh, you know, there are over 15,000 flavors for vape pens now. And the flavors are like mint and strawberry and chocolate. And I asked the kids, I said, why do you think that is? And they all said, because they want, they wanna, they want us to get addicted. And I said, why do you think that is? And they said, because they think we're stupid, you know, and because, because they don't know. But a lot of them were surprised at the number of flavors and the fact that they're targeting them. And when they, when they know this stuff, then they start to think differently. Then they start to think mm -hmm. more logically and not just like do something because it's cool, because now they, you know, because now they know, they know the facts, they know the truth about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. peer pressure is cr incredible. You know, so, you go to a yeah. party, 50% of people are doing either some kind of vaping or they do mm -hmm. marijuana. Mm -hmm. So right. how do you prevent that? Uh, uh, talk about vaping. Why don't we you talk know, about that a little exactly. bit as well? Exactly. I think the whole point is that what we're, what's happening is that people don't want to talk about it. It's kind of controversial. So you're, everybody's like letting it go. But the reality is that people make up their own minds. And kids are smart at 12 and 13 and 14. So if you just give parents the information like you know like I have booklets from the health department they're not you know uh, over the top they're just giving the basic facts so if we give basic facts to adults and we give basic facts to children it sets them up so they can make up their own mind so I wanted to cover a couple of other points with you is people also had the idea that we were going to make a lot of money because a lot of times people say well the reason we have uh, you know, this cannabis, the shops are everywhere, is because they're making a lot of money. So that's another thing that changed in this last year, is they finally showing the numbers that California, they said that we're going to make a billion dollars in tax revenue in the first year. They didn't even make 40% of that. So the reality is there's many reasons this is happening, but the black market, which is basically all those shops that are in LA City, that are not licensed. They don't have license. That's what they're calling the black market. But essentially, it's a mixture of problems, which is that our, we change the rules so that it's very difficult for the law enforcement to close these illegal shops. And the next thing is a lot of the uh, drug cartels have moved into our tribal lands, into our forests, and they're doing uh, illegal grows. 
they're pouring pesticides into them. When these kids are taking in marijuana, they're taking in pesticides, heavy metals, they're taking in mold directly into their lungs. It is so completely unsafe. So the where we're going with this is we were told we were going to make a lot of money. We were told that the black market was going to go away and we were going to take get everything under control. The reverse is happening. So it's it's not trying to uh, go back in time and to make it unlegal because keep in mind it's been legal since 96. What the difference is we're allowing advertising, we're allowing marketing. We've got huge billboards all through LA saying get high. So yeah. this is a type of marketing. So what we're trying to do is we should be doing the same thing we did with cigarettes. Cigarettes are legal. So how did we achieve the cigarettes coming down. What we did is we keep the taxes high. We divert the taxes into mass media. So we're communicating about this and we make it uncool. We don't, you know, allow vaping indoors because there's secondhand, uh, you're vaping chemicals, right? And so are your children, you know, vape, you know, taking in the chemicals. But essentially, they restrict the marketing. That's what we want. We want the marketing to be restricted as we did with cigarettes. We want them to increase the taxes and, and do the mass media. We want the same policies that we did for cigarettes, not because we think everyone's gonna stop smoking cigarettes, but just to be fair to the next generation. Yeah, I agree with yeah. you. Coco, what do you say to those parents who say, you know, some parents say it's a cool thing to let your kids smoke because, you know, it's okay. It doesn't have that much of a harm. I did it back in the 70s and they wanna be cool parents. Right. And I, you know, I told this one guy who told me, um, he's not a friend, he's just a guy that I knew. He yeah. said, well, you know, I want to be a cool parent. I don't want him to say that I'm, I'm an old timer. I want him mm -hmm. to kind of have a free hand so they can try everything. Uh, what do you say to parents like that, that believe it's a cool thing <clears throat> to do to allow their kids to smoke? Well, I'm a mom. I have two boys, 27 and 22, and I think it's very irresponsible for a parent to say, I want to be a cool parent, so I'm going to have my kids smoke pot. Or what about if you have them just try LSD because I want to be a cool parent? I think they have enough cool friends. I think the definition of cool is depends on how you look at it. I think to bring up kids that are safe and responsible, I think that to me is a lot a better product for a parent to have than to be a cool parent you know, to his kids. You know. If my kid is gonna, God forbid, die because of an overdose or because of God knows what's gonna, what reaction that drug is gonna have on him, what am I gonna say? I'm gonna be happy because I, I was a cool parent. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, to me, that's like very irresponsible for a parent to think that we're supposed to educate our kids, we're supposed to give them the truth and then say, this is the truth, that the decision is yours. I'm not gonna be with you 12, you know, 24 7. Mm -hmm you know but this is what you should you should know about this and one thing I, I just what the other thing I also tell kids and I tell parents because they tell me it's legal and I say just because it's legal doesn't mean when it went from November 6 to November 7 to whatever day it was that it became legal doesn't mean the effects that it has, has changed. went away yeah. it doesn't mean that I mean it's a psychoactive drug it makes you high I mean what what parents would want their kids to become addicted, like Kathy was mm -hmm. saying, one out of five kids who try it for the first time, try it for the first time, they become addicted. And at these levels, at these levels of THC. Oh, as you say, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, lower levels uh, of THC will still get some people mm -hmm. hooked on something called a um, marijuana, some, some kind of a addiction to it. They said that younger kids are more likely to mm -hmm. be addicted than older, uh, older uh, people. Um, one of the issues that has come up is, well, it's legal. It's going to come to your city anyways. You like it or not, mm -hmm. we're going to be there. So mm -hmm. uh, you better accept it. And right. then I just read an article uh, in Pasadena. Pasadena said they can have one dispensary for each district. They have six of them. Mm -hmm. And then they put restrictions. Mm -hmm. And because of the restrictions, they could only have four. Mm -hmm. And they were sued spend hundreds of thousands yeah. and now they just last week changed their rules saying okay now you can have six and all the restrictions we put previously uh, we're going to set aside and now you can have six mm -hmm. so it's not initially when he first comes in mm -hmm. it, it sounds okay but what happens as time mm -hmm. goes by with those cities right. that have had it 
is the problem, and then the Here, same thing through with City right, of LA. Right. Here's the thing: is that one of the one of the points of the proposition was each city makes their own choice. So if you live in Glendale, you have ready access to both illegal shops and legal shops, but they're not in Glendale. And the relevance to that is that when you keep like there's like on the cigarettes when you make a little less accessible a little less friendly then you're following actually 75 percent of all cities in california have said not in my backyard and the reason what, is, what is that percentage 75 percent 75 percent of all cities in california said y you know it's legal but we don't want the shops in our backyard and the so the statements that some right. of these people make that at least more than 50% of the cities are now making it legal is just not true. It's in none of the literature, I can tell you that. Okay. In other words, every article, if you just Google, why is California not making any money? Last year, in the last year, in cannabis stocks, they lost $35 billion. That's how badly that industry is doing. So here's the concept is when you say to yourself, you know what? let's say pornography, right? Pornography is everywhere. Let's, let's invest in pornography. It's not that great of a business if you've ever found that the, the statistics, money-wise, <laughs> they're doing terrible. It's, it's basically, is the city going to invest in like tech, high tech, or are we gonna invest in putting cannabis shops so that it makes it easier and more convenient and more embraced by Glendale? Are we gonna, is that our, our choice, whether or not we have it, you know, like uh, drop shipped or whatever we're doing, that is something different. It's whether or not we want to embrace it on the ground. And here's the next point is that when we went through this whole thing, a lot of this was not known. The Surgeon General had not released his final studies. Um, the vaping crisis had not hit. It's really, it's, a, it's almost a false dialogue of, you know, legal, illegal. It is not the dialogue at all. It's is your community educated? Right, right. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I spoke with Wartan Garabedian, mm -hmm. which is a council member, yeah. and he's, he's completely against it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he said that he does not want to have, he has, uh, you know, uh, three right. daughters, and he said he does not want to have shops in Glendale. Right. Uh, and I know a couple, few other uh, council members have said the mm -hmm. same sentiment. I think it's just a matter of, I talk to my friends and people that mm -hmm. I know, and there's hundreds of them, and I don't see a single one saying, I want to have it right next to my house. Exactly. Right. And, right. and you know what? The people who say, yeah, it's okay for it to come, mm -hmm. they have to say it's okay for me to have it next to my house. Right. As long as you say it's okay to have it next to your <laughs> house, then I'm okay with you right. having, having it here. But if yeah. you say, I want to have it in my city, but I want to have it in South Glendale, uh, away from my house right. on, the, on the corner, well, there's some house right next mm -hmm. to that right. cannabis place but yeah. store in in South Glendale as well mm -hmm. so that's a that's a problem it's it's the benefit is for a few and the rest of us uh, inherit the problems yeah and it's it's, it's an interesting uh, concept because I think we'll get as, as time goes by as time and we get more by. data that's right and we get more information I think it, we're going to have much more eye-opening Right. Uh, experiences in the next uh, two, three, four years, and we actually, need to wait to see yeah. what happens with those. With actually, the the, at the state level, uh, the the surgeon or not the surgeon general, but the attorney general, he's he's predicting five more years before uh, we even have fifty percent of our drugs are being sold. In other words, right now it's like much higher is black right. market. Right. In another five years from now we might have it down to 50%. This is not an industry that's under control. Right. Well, yeah. we need to wait and see what the data says. Yeah. We, before we take any action on exactly. it, we need to see what the data says in the next five years. Right. And then it's not too late if you right. want to bring them in. Then we'll look at the data and see if that's, that's something right. that we want to do or not do in yeah. each city separately. Thank you very Agreed. much. Yeah. I really Thank appreciate you. you coming in. Mm -hmm. This is something that we will continue discussing mm -hmm. in the next year or so, and we'll bring you back in again as, as more information becomes available. Thank, thank you, you, Kathy. Great. Thank you, Coco. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you for uh, listening to us. It's a very interesting, very controversial issue, and I want to I want to continue this discussion in upcoming months again with Kathy and Coco. And thank you for uh, listening to us, and we'll see you soon.